Hey everyone, today I want to tell you the very inspiring, interesting story of a woman named Kathy Ireland. I found out about her story through this interview conducted in this book called Getting There. This book was recently released this year and it's a series of interviews with some of the most success successful people of uh, our time. And she's in this book and let me just tell you a little bit about her. She's an entrepreneur. She started her own company, brand marketing company, and she's also appeared on Sports Illustrated 13 consecutive times. And she was on the cover three times. And so it's a very interesting story. And I was just very shocked having heard her story because I do think she is an anomaly. I do think that many models and supermodels they get to where they are easily and they've had an easy childhood growing up and once they become a model they just sit there and they're comfortable with it and they just go with the flow for her I was just very interested because her childhood growing up was not like that she hustled and she was taught to hustle by her parents from an early age just like a man would and while she was getting towards the end of her modeling career, she decided to take a huge plunge and she started many, many businesses and many different products and services and continuously failed and got rejected and did a lot of things that an average man, an average entrepreneur who's not super good looking had to do. She had to sleep in airports. She got doors slammed in her face. It's such an interesting story and it just goes to show you that a lot of people who get to these levels of success, oftentimes they hustle really hard and you don't see it behind the scenes. And therefore, let me just get you, uh, give you a little bit more about her inspiring story. So growing up, she was a very interesting uh, woman. Her parents, and I think this is very inspiring because she lived in a time in the 1970s where equality and uh, feminism weren't really a thing. And women were just naturally assumed to have less opportunities and given less uh, than men. But her parents constantly encouraged her to work and told her how she had to earn her money and how there's an abundance of opportunities out there even though she was living in the 1970s where there were barriers and limits for women. Uh, and on top of that, um, I just found this story very inspiring. So she went through many, many jobs by the time she was 10 years old. She was, she's, uh, she was just very inspired by her parents to do so and therefore she painted small rocks and sold them door to door. She washed cars, watered plants, designed handbags to sell at the beach and there came a point where uh, when she was 11 years old, there was uh, a newspaper, a local newspaper agency looking to hire a newspaper boy. And the ad read, newspaper carrier wanted, are you the boy for the job? And guess what? His dad went up to her and immediately told her that this is the job for her. And she was very inspired by it and did the right thing, which was go to the paper and told her, told them that I am the girl for the job. And so here's where it gets even more interesting. So first off, as a child, like what type of person has so many uh, jobs and entrepreneurial ventures by the time they're 11 years old? That doesn't happen. And even when it does, um, she had to go through a lot of struggles to get there having um, because she was a woman and she just really illustrates here in this book how um, going through her life she went through a lot of rejection and pain as well and it's just very interesting she was told by customers that uh, the job she was doing as a newspaper delivery girl was a boy's job and she'll never last. She was told that she couldn't 
make it as a model. She was rejected numerous times by modeling agencies. But I think her story just illustrates some of the key concepts that I come to time and time again uh, throughout my videos. Things that are so common in successful people. One of them is the fact that they don't give up. They keep trying despite the fact that they get rejected time and time again. So you kind of have to almost expect that going into this. She remarks on the fact that uh, once, um, you know, once her modeling career was over with, she decided to start, in, start a business. And she failed at so many ventures but didn't give up. She started a microbrewery, a skincare line, various art projects, and so on and so on until she finally got it right uh, by convincing a man who wanted her to model these socks to start a sock business, which had never been done before. No one had ever done a sock line before. And that finally took off. So it just shows you how many times, oftentimes the people who ended up achieving success, they did it because they went through numerous, numerous failures to get there. And it's interesting because you'll see these entrepreneurs who start one business or two businesses and then they just give up. They, they throw their hands up and they say, well, I can't do it or you know, it wasn't for me. Or they have resentment towards other people. And it's just very common to see that these people who make it, they go through a lot of rejection and pain. To add on to that, it just goes to show you how uh, she persevered and she proved so many people wrong despite everyone telling her she couldn't do it. Uh, for instance, when she was a newspaper delivery girl, she went on to win that year's Carrier of the Year Award for her district. And then she proceeded to do it again two more years in a row. On top of that, when she w was pursuing her modeling career, she was rejected by so many, so many agencies and headhunters who would just very superficially look her up and down and tell her uh, she's not wanted. And eventually, after four years of work, she went from no modeling jobs to being booked for Sports Illustrated numerous times, as I've mentioned before. And that's not the end of her journey. You know, a lot of female models would have just stopped there. They would have just regressed or lived off the money that they made as a model. You know, that's always an interesting question. I'm always wondering, well, when the models get like too old and, you know, typically this, the shelf life is like 10 years, um, how do they survive? Because I feel like oftentimes they they don't really, they're not ever really educated on keeping up with their finances. So I think, generally speaking, many of them try and find other routes of income once they move out of modeling and they start you know, pr preparing for that, acknowledging it. But from what I've heard, a lot of models, they live paycheck to paycheck. And so I am really just, if anyone knows, let me know because um, that's what I've heard a lot of times. I mean, I'm sure there's some who are smart and plan ahead and can leverage their other skills and make a decent income. But I've heard, especially lately, nowadays, many of them are just living paycheck to paycheck. Or uh, some of them, like some of the big ones, I'm sure they have a mountain of money and maybe they save up so after their modeling career ends, they go on. But if anyone knows in the comments, uh, let me know. Anyhow, so she decided not to do this. As I've mentioned, she started numerous, numerous businesses and eventually got to this uh, sock business. But this was not an easy journey. Even when her sock business started, finally started taking off, it was rocky, rocky, rocky. Um, you know, she had to take out a $50,000 loan and she had to go door to door and move across the country and present these socks to retailers and have all these people reject her and door slammed in her face. And all sorts of reasons were given to her. These socks aren't good enough. Uh, they, they're good, but they're too expensive and so on. And it just is very interesting. She has such perseverance, I guess, from her early experience doing all this work as a child with all her jobs and her modeling experience. So she was just very used to rejection. And 
I mean, this, I mean, it's just a very inspiring story because you just assume that a lot of models, they're just very, you know, they have it easy or they luck out or they don't have a lot of these normal traits that um, people do or that they, they don't have these hard pressed skills to deal with the pains in life, rejection and failure. And for this woman, she is, a, uh, is not that case at all. She's an entrepreneur through and through, able to s stick with the toughest of them and get rejected. And I mean, she goes on to tell us about how she finally got a few sporting goods stores and Kmart to pick up her product. And um, in order to do that, she had to live on a very tight budget with her team and sleep in airports to save money and uh, view everything uh, as uh, giving up for an investment for the future. So, I mean, it's just a very inspiring story and it doesn't end. It just goes to show you that, um, especially in business, these things don't just, uh, you know, you can't have just full sailing constantly. Oftentimes the best businesses have to always stay vigilant and prepare for the worst. And for her, that's what happened. Uh, she had a very steady income coming from Kmart guaranteed payments for coming from this giant massive retailer all of a sudden Kmart files for bankruptcy it's the largest bankruptcy in retail history and it screws them over completely the bankers call her in tell her that uh, they need all the money back that was borrowed and they now because they're not getting these solid payments from Kmart everything is screwed over, they can't pay back these loans and keep the, the wheels of the business uh, flowing. And everything gets really, really grim. The bankers say that they'll take their homes and possessions if they don't get paid back. And everything goes horrendously. So they scramble, she works incessantly around the clock with her team. And eventually, long story short, she manages to start selling to independent retailers. And then eventually when Kmart got restructured, she was able to sell to Kmart again and have a more solid foundation. And therefore the lesson is in business, always be prepared for the worst. So when the worst can happen, whether it's a recession, a natural disaster, whatever else, a health crisis and a viral epidemic, you are ready and you can prepare for it. You always wanna be conservative with your spending because um, if you have zero dollars in a bank account, when something unexpected hits, you're screwed. So her story is very inspiring. And I think another common thread is just how a lot of the best entrepreneurs, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, uh, Sam Walton, oftentimes, if you look at their childhood, they've oftentimes been very entrepreneurial from a very early age, uh, delivering newspapers, selling things door to door, um, starting their own small business ventures from an early age. So that may be a sign if you're one of those people that you may have the entrepreneurial itch. You may have a talent for this. And I think she definitely did. And I definitely think that her parents definitely influenced her tremendously and helped her tremendously in becoming and um, viewing herself as capable and just as able uh, to start a business successfully and achieve what she wanted and earn the money she wanted despite her shortcomings or despite that she was a female uh, in a day and age when that was not common thinking. So I have a lot to learn from this. I have a lot to incorporate into my own life from this. And hopefully you've learned something from this yourself. And I've talked too much. Uh, so that's all I got to say. Thank you so much for watching. And um, I just want to conclude with one last thing. Um, I really recommend you reading this book if you're ever interested. Check it out from the library like I did um, because uh, I didn't tell you her full story and her full story, again, I don't think this this book gives a full um, solid representation of all she's went through. Uh, it's only about six pages on her. But if you want to learn even more about her other than what I've just summarized, this book does a good job because she went through a lot more. In fact, um, she went through a lot of criticism and uh, people disliking her when she was a model and when she was a journalist 
and uh, when she when she hosted the Academy Awards, um, and basically, uh, wait, oh, I'm sorry, she wasn't a journalist. She's when she started her business, and basically she was criticized. She was told that uh, she had a horrible voice. She was told that um, she was a bimbo. She was told that she was um, uh, on drugs. She looked pregnant, and she should be shot. And these things were tweeted by uh, high executive people in companies. They were written in, in articles. And it shows you how uh, in life you have to be a certain level of... Um, you have to have a certain amount of immunity to criticism. And for her, she took a very interesting route. She... Uh, use that criticism constructively to alter herself and make herself better so she acknowledged and considered the fact that maybe she wasn't the best speaker maybe she could have a better voice but at the same time she was uh, she didn't let these things sway her to the point where she it affected her negatively and so I just think that's very interesting it reminds me of Arnold Schwarzenegger um, if you read his story he has many instances like this too where he doesn't let other people affect him in this way and I think it's another great lesson to learn from and uh, yeah that's all I really want to say if you like these videos leave it a like and hit the subscribe button and hopefully I will see you in my next video thanks so much for watching